I'm coming at, coming at you with a, a second refill of my coffee today. Um, yeah, you know, what's kind of been uh, on my mind lately, because I've been trying to connect, obviously, what I've been doing on YouTube before I started talking to you guys to now. And really, I saw that the biggest theme in my life, of course, is is travel, you know, but it's not just traveling physically, because, you know, that's just surficial. It's about traveling in every which way, right? It's about traveling inside ourselves. It's about traveling through dimensions, through our minds, through our souls. And it's about just moving. It's about moving and feeling moved, right? Um, it's not a coincidence. Like I said, uh, words always ha are magic. And it's, it's not a coincidence that emotions, you know, are linked to the word motion, right? So these things are not coincidental. And what I wanted to to illuminate or to connect is to make that, you know, that intersection between travel and your own inner growth is that one is truly um, necessary for the other. You know, we need to travel and we need to travel within ourselves, but we need to travel outside and explore this beautiful world that we've been situated in. And it's not about traveling. Like I'm not talking about family vacations or, you know, traveling, you know, traveling in groups or with friends. I'm talking about actually solo trips. And if you are blessed enough, as I've been, and you can travel on your own, even once in your life and do a solo trip, it could be something short, could be something small, it could just be camping out in the forest, whatever. Doing it alone is what is the catalyst and what has been the catalyst for me to experience the growth that I experienced at a young age. Now, when I was 20, um, you're going to hear all these stories like, oh, when I was 15, I used to walk to school five miles a day. No, I mean, it is kind of a funny story like that in the sense that, yeah, I was 20. I had just finished first year university and I had like literally nine, 800, 900 bucks in my pocket and I bought a ticket to London, uh, open ticket. And I didn't know when I was coming back. It was 1997. So I am now dating myself and I just got up and I went to London all by myself. And I didn't have a friend there. I didn't have a job there. The only thing I did know was the language. So I think that's why I chose it. But I had always wanted to go to England and London since I was a, a kid, uh, since I was an early teenager, because I loved British music. I was a huge fan of Depeche Mode. Um, at the time, Massive Attack was huge and, you know, all of that trip hop. So I was just dying to get to England. I thought, yeah, this is, this is a promised land. I got to go check it out. And no one wanted to go with me or no one was in the, you know, position to go with me. And I said, you know what? Like, if I don't go now, I don't know if I'll ever go. And I was scared. I was scared. But I worked hard all year, saved my money. I was a waitress in a restaurant. And I saved all my money. And I'll never forget buying that ticket was so real because it was one of the first things I had done for myself by myself. And I just remember looking at that ticket and getting that work visa from the British uh, consulate. And they called me and said, okay, your passport's ready. And I was just stoked. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. This is crazy. And it was that journey, actually, that really changed me and actually set the tone and set the pace for the rest of my life. Because if I didn't go and travel by myself, I don't know if I would have continued on that path. Because that trip gave me so much courage and insight and time to reflect and time to be with myself. I am someone I've never been afraid uh, to be alone. OK, um, I'm not a person who goes from relationship to relationship. I can spend days, hours, months by myself. I don't I'm not the kind of person who picks up the phone and, you know, talk someone's ear off. Um, I like to contemplate. I like to think I like to read. And I just really love to feel um, I love the wind on my face. I could sit outside here today for hours if I didn't have, uh, you know, homework duties with my kids. I could just be sitting out here all day absorbing the sunshine and just listening to the wind. That's me. When I was a teenager, um, yeah, I had some turmoil in my family. My parents were getting divorced and there was like, you know, lots of drama. And so for me, not only was it a way to 
leave a situation, but it was also a way to recontextualize myself in a completely different environment outside of the reach of others who were de trying to define me, trying to give me labels, trying to tell me what I was, who I was, what I should do, what I should study, where I should go, what job I should have, and blah, blah, fucking blah, right? Um, it was It was just so cleansing. It was freeing, right? So me being a freedom-loving individual, the second I could go, I left. And it wasn't even, it didn't even matter if I was scared. I just knew that, you know, what I feared uh, wasn't going to go away. And so it was better for me to face up to it and check it out and try it and explore it. Because I always had home, right? I could always come running home with my tail between my legs and say, hey, it didn't work out. I failed, yada, yada. Okay, Canada, Canada was there. My house was there. They weren't leaving me. But I needed to go out and slingshot myself into the world to te test out the waters and test myself. Okay, that's what it was. I was gone for five, six months. I traveled all over the UK, Scotland. I met so many crazy people. Like, I will tell you some of these stories. I worked, I worked in a pub, and it's pretty crazy. I showed up in London. Like I said, no job, no contacts. This is 97, guys. There's no freaking internet to hook you up in any way like it is now. And I literally picked up a newspaper, went to the classifieds, sat down in a little sandwich shop, and started circling numbers and saying, okay, okay, let's see, what can I do? Because I didn't have a place to stay longer than five, six days in a hostel. And I didn't know anyone, right? So I didn't have a cell phone. There were cell phones back then. So I picked up this paper and I saw this ad, okay? And it said... Bartender, barmen, barwomen needed, um, accommodation included, uh, 100 pounds a week, and food is included also. And I was like, what? I get to work in a pub. I get to live upstairs and food is included. 100 pounds a week. Back in, back in the day, that was pretty good, right? So I was like, done. And I called. I just I got the, my change up. I went to a pay phone, you know, one of those red boxes, and I started putting in the coins, and I dialed up this lady. And she picks up the phone and she's like, hello, hello. And I'm like, yeah, listen, I'm Canadian. I'm just arrived. I need a job. I need a place to stay. I promise you I will be the best worker you ever have. I'm, I'll be an amazing bar woman. I will do whatever it takes. Just give me a chance. And she's like, and I heard the hesitation. You know, she's like, who is this crazy person who just called me up? And I heard that hesitation. And then she went, all right, come on over right now. I'm in 15 minutes. And if you can get it. You've got a job. I was like, what? <laughs> All right, sorry for my bad, um, bad accent there, but, you know, it's fun. Um, I showed up, and she looked she had one. She had one look at me. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It was no resume. Or this. She just took a look at me up and down. She said, all right, girl, when can you start? And I said, right now. She said, go put your stuff upstairs. Here's the key. I literally, I, she didn't even ask for my passport. She just gave me the key to a room upstairs. She said, drop off your stuff. Come down. I'll train you today. You can start tomorrow. And I worked at that bar right up until the end of the summer, like literally up to days before I had to leave. And I met so many crazy characters in there. Like, let me tell you, it, I, it was a show. It was a show. Every walk, every, every walk of life. I'm talking, there were politicians in there. There were sports stars in there because this was in the Tottenham, Tottenham Road, uh, Soho area right next to Mayfair. So it was quite ritzy. I mean, you had sports stars walk in there, and then you had pimps and prostitutes coming in for a pint, too. So it was really interesting, and it opened my mind. So I'm, like, 20 years old, and I've never traveled on my own. And all of a sudden, literally within half an hour of looking, I've got to jump on the tube, find this place. I got a job. I had a place to stay. And I was like, wow, I did it. I did it. And just being able to have sort, like, have sorted myself out by myself, on my own energy, on my own will, it was one of the most, it was just one of the most incredible, electric, uplifting feelings because I knew, like, the universe is on my side. I can do it. I just need to show up, okay? So what is the point of the story today? I'm telling you, traveling on your own, don't be scared. Everyone needs to do it. Everyone. And the younger you are, the better. You Gen Z out there, if you can go somewhere that has been calling you, that has been drawing you, go. Okay? Your destiny is waiting for you there. Your destiny is waiting for you there. When you show up, 
the universe will show up. Your destiny will show up. Whatever is meant for you is waiting for you. No one else can take it away. You know, but we have to be courageous enough to take that first step, get on that airplane or jump on that bus or whatever it is that we need to do to get there. And we just need to go. So many amazing, beautiful consequences from that trip and led my life in so many beautiful, crazy directions because of have gone, you know, going to London. Um, you know, I'm so thankful that I got on that plane, that I bought that ticket, that I bet on myself. I bet on myself. You know what? And I'm like, I'm all in, man. I'm all in. All my cards are on the table. My chips are on the table. I'm all in. And you know what? I've never, I've never lost a hand when I went all in. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. I'm trying to tell you. Just bet on yourself and show up. Okay? You're, you're worth it. And show, show the universe you're worth it because you will be amazed at what's waiting for you. So, if you're going to gamble, do it the right way. And trust me, you are a sure bet. Cheers, guys. Till the next time.